Happy Halloween! This video is going to be another position play video. Um, we're not going to do it in the dark, but it is Halloween, so I thought it would be uh, a little spooky if I turned the lights out, right? Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to scroll through this this illuminated cueing art software for this projection system just to show you some of the things that are on here. There's artistic pool, billiards university, bullseye billiards. Um, there's a Thorsten Holman has a folder in this thing. Uh, there's an illuminated cueing arts training folder, Phil Capel, Poology, Ralph Eckert, Cerevari, Tor Lowry. Um, I have several different things. You can make your own. Like I made this, it's kind of neat. I'll share it, just take a couple of minutes to go over this. This is kind of neat. So, all this is showing right here, and it's a lot easier to see with the light out because, watch your eyes, I want to blind everybody. Boom! I have LEDs in this light that are so bright that it does take away some of the quality of the projection system on this end of the table, but you can still see this pretty well. But what I want to show here on this it's kind of a spur of the moment thing, is when a ball's sitting close to the pocket, like down here. So here's the shot from right there. There's only there's about a 10 degree window for this ball to go into the pocket. It can go into the pocket over here. It can go into the pocket. Can't really fit two balls in this pocket, but it can go, it can go on this side of the pocket or this side of the pocket. So it's got that little. It's about 10 degrees from this close. That angle right there. Pow, big angle. I can go here or there and make that ball. Well, what's neat about that is when a ball is this close to the pocket, whatever the, the window of acceptance is going into that pocket, the extremes right and left and down the center, the same window applies on this side of the object ball. So for this shot, it's set at a 28 degree angle because when you when you aim for a half ball shot it really comes off at about 28 degrees because of the friction between the balls so it, it's not really a 30 degree a true 30 degree cut shot it comes off a little thicker than that so I set it at 28 so what happens is I can aim at the edge of the ball from here and it's going to go center pocket I can aim at the edge of that three ball from anywhere in this whole shaded area or highlighted area and it's still going to go in the pocket I could be here and aim at the edge of the ball and it's going to go to this side of the pocket if I hit it accurately if I'm over here and aim at the edge of the ball the half ball hit it's going to go to this side of the pocket because this same 10 degree window I have over here I have on this side of the object ball from the aim point or from the contact point or from whatever you want to call it but it's from right there from the ghost ball out so anywhere in this area I can use the same aim point and make that ball because it's so close to the pocket but look what it looks like when we go is it this way no this way now look at this shot this ball is now sitting back here and the cue ball is over here so from this angle it's the same angle I had down there a 28 degree shot or a half ball here a 30 degree shot going to come off as 28 but now the two ball window that I have down here from that distance this is only about a one and a half degree window it's a pretty narrow well the same one and a half degrees comes off this side which means now if you look at it like this when my cue ball is on this end of this shot I have to be somewhere within this little one and a half degree window and I can use the half ball aim. So that just shows that when you're farther away from the pocket, when the object ball is farther away from the pocket, you really have to be accurate on where your aim is because from here it's a half ball aim, from there it's a half ball aim, and from there it's a half ball aim. But once I get over here, it's a little bit thicker than a half ball aim or if I'm sitting right here, it's a little bit thinner than a half ball aim. But now when, I, when the object ball is sitting down here, it's a 10 degree window and you saw how wide that was. It was that. I could be anywhere in here 
and use the same aim point. So it doesn't really matter how far the cue ball is from the object ball, you've got more room for error. But when the object ball is far from the pocket, you don't have a lot of room at all. Um, kind of really didn't want to go into all that. But it's Halloween and the more dark stuff I can do, the cooler it looks, right? So all I really wanted to do, let's get this off the table. Let's load another ICA training pattern right now. The next time we're going to do nine ball, I threw nine balls out here on the table. I lined them up nice and neat and I've already messed that up. So this is the menu. And I'm going to scroll down here and go to the ICA Illuminated Cueing Arts. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to go to, I think it's under this Pocket Billiards Workout. And under there I can, I can practice aiming, different aiming. Uh, there's kicks and banks. That aiming is like a ghost ball aiming. So there, there's kicks and bank practice and there's pattern challenges, safety play. I'm going to go to pattern challenges right there. And we're going to go to rotation games. We've already done an eight ball a couple of weeks ago. I just did one yesterday too. I just haven't uploaded it. I don't know why, but I haven't uploaded it. Um, I probably said something that made me sound stupid and I just don't know if I want to put it online yet or not. So here we go. I don't, I don't like record a million takes of any videos. I usually do it in one take unless I say something that doesn't make any sense or that makes me sound like an idiot. Then I'll re-record it. Um, so here's nine ball. I've got nine balls out here. So we'll do nine ball rotation. There are different patterns. I've got that one looks like, um, and then this one, this one doesn't look too bad. Looks pretty wide open. There's that one. I think there are five of them. Look like there's five patterns on each one. Um, yeah, this one doesn't look too bad either. And I got that one. See, all these look pretty open. The first one looked pretty tough. So if I'm going to do one, is that the first one? Yeah, there's eight ball. Okay, so there's nine ball again. Um, or it's not really eight ball. It's an eight ball rotation thing. So I can click on the directions. We'll just pick this first one right here, the number one. I wish it was as live that I could just scroll through them and you can like vote on which one you want to do. Um, if I click on this box, it'll tell me I get cue ball in hand for a level one. I don't want, but you can shoot the balls in any order. I'm not going to do that. Um, set all the balls out here where they're supposed to be. Um, this is a one. This is an eight. There's fives over there, the nine's here, five ball looks like it's frozen to this rail, the eight's frozen to that rail, two is over there, three is here. So you know, with the eight ball pattern, I wasn't real picky about putting them in the right order because it's eight ball, it's solids and stripes, but in here I'm going to shoot them in order so they have to be in accordance with what this pattern's set up as. Um, those guys at Illuminated Cueing Arts are professionals. These patterns aren't just random patterns. They, they do this to challenge you, to make it tough. So even though I said those other three or four patterns looked easier, there's probably something in there would, that would really trip me up. So I know this one, I, it looks tough, so I picked it. So it says level one, shoot them in any order. Well, if I'm going to shoot these in any order, like a game of straight pull, I want to start with the five ball because it's tough to get on and I've got it blocked. So I shoot the five ball, then the one ball, then the eight ball, then the rest of them are wide open. That's too easy. We're going to play rotation, shoot them in order. That's going to be a little more tricky. That's level two. Shoot the balls in any numerical, I mean, shoot them in numerical order. So let me get my cursor back up here. Make that disappear. I'll put my little cursor on the diamond here. We'll blank that out. And we'll see if we can run these out. I don't like this. I'm telling tell you right now, if I can get an angle on this four ball to come off the rail and come this way and leave me in there, then I could get out with a five. I like that. But I really like maybe just coming off the one ball right now and coming into here, bumping that nine out of the way. But if you're, if you're, if you can't visualize that angle right there, which if I use low right, it's going to hit the rail here, come off there, come right through here, and then bump this nine a little bit. 
I don't want to bump it all the way over there and mess the six up. But if I can just bump the nine over here, it opens the five up and makes the run out so much easier. Probably not supposed to do that, but typically better not to be bumping balls. You don't have to bump. I could easily shoot this and miss the nine entirely and the cue ball go over here and then hook me and I won't have a shot on the deuce. Or I could come off the rail here and thin the nine, roll the nine to there and a cue ball goes over there. And then my run out's ruined, so I'm not going to do that. That's just an option. I'm just kind of talking through all the things that I think when I get up. And this is what it looks like. So I'm just going to really try to get an angle right here. And if you really want to learn how to play position, I mean, I've got a really great chapter in my Playing to Win book. But there are so many great books and material and YouTube people out there showing good fundamental position play. And really all you have to know, an eight ball, if you get a little bit out of line, there are other balls. So you, you always kind of have a backup plan. That's a good strategy. Have a backup ball in case you don't get the cue ball where you want to get it. Well, in this game, rotation, you don't have that option. I have to shoot the lowest ball. If I don't get a shot on the lowest ball, I have to play some sort of safety or pull out some world beater shot to try to win um, or to try to stay in the game. So the object here is I just, everybody says you have to think two balls ahead, but nobody really explains to me, I don't think they explain it very well of what that really means. So I'm gonna to try to my best definition of it. When you're playing, I'm gonna play the one ball, but I'm really setting up the shot on the three ball. The two ball, I'm gonna play at an angle off of the one that gets me an angle on the two that gets me where I want to be on this three. So that's thinking two balls ahead. The best way to look at it is I'm playing the one ball, but I'm working on the three ball. And then when I'm playing the two ball, I'm working on the four ball. Because if I don't make sure that I get the right angle on the ball that I'm shooting after the ball I'm shooting now, my run out's not going to be very, very pretty if it's a run out at all. So Whatever ball you're working on, you're shooting, you're actually working on a ball after the next ball. I may have just made it even more confusing. I don't know, but just think of it this way. I'm shooting the one ball, but I'm working an angle for this three ball. And when I get to the two, I'm going to be working on the four. When I get to the three, I'm going to be working on the five. And it's, everything is a ball ahead, two balls, two balls like that. And if that didn't confuse you, I hope you have a good Halloween. All right, here we go. See, I might re-record this because I just said something. It just didn't make any sense. But here we go. Talking too much. I'm just going to try to run him out. I'm going to use some right-hand spin on this ball. Came up a little short, but I'm going to be okay. was low left. I, I, the window for this five is not as bad. It looked bad with the two ball in the way, but I've still got a pretty good area over here I can get to for this five ball. I can be anywhere from about here. So anywhere in this whole big area, that's not bad. I can easily get there. So I'm not going to worry about that. I was going to play the three ball over there and come off the rail and leave the cue ball in here so I can shoot this, come off, and come over this way and try to hit this little window. But I could easily get hooked behind the, the nine ball if I do that and mess it up. So we're not going to do that. I'm just going to shoot this, bring the cue ball off the rail and back over, and then shoot the four and go over there to play the five ball. And if I end up being straight in on that five ball, I'm not going to do anything stupid to try to get on the six, I'm just gonna play the six and the seven. So here we go. The main goal is to focus on every shot. So I'm shooting the three ball, but I'm really working on getting to that five. That's thinking a couple of balls ahead. visualizing what I want to do. I just want to roll over into this area. If I hit the rail and bounce out a little bit, it would be perfect. 
I don't want to come any closer to this side pocket. It gets smaller. See, this is the window I have. I would like to be here. I've got a big area there. I don't want to try to get here because it's a little area. I could get there and then I'm messed up. So I need to get over here somewhere. Just come straight across. And it looks like it's just a tiny bit of right hand spin and just the right speed. I missed that ball. I got very lucky that I I hit that pocket speed. Could have ended my run out right there. See, now we're not setting bad from there. I got in the smaller side of that window, but I wanted it in here. But this is fine. It's a good angle. So, I don't really have to worry about this seven ball. I just have to make sure when I get on the seven ball, I'm up here. So I need to think about that now. How do I shoot the five ball that ensures a shot on the six will get the cue ball up here on this side of the seven so I can go to the eight without having to do some, you know, three rail position or anything. I don't want to be over here shooting the seven ball and the eight balls on this side of the table. I want to be on this side of the seven so the cue ball is naturally coming toward the eight. So... I could shoot this and just follow come off the rail off the rail I want to be right there somewhere in this area shoot that six ball in the corner pocket yeah I like that just straight follow shot it too firm and got very very lucky and I had the option of coming over here if I wanted to I just didn't think I was going to hit that hard so Looks like I did that on purpose, but I'm telling you right now, I did not. But this is perfect. I want to be on this side of the seven ball where I want to be. I'm not going to float this and be sitting right here shooting the seven ball, though. I want to hit this rail and come back out and be in there. Now I could even use a little draw and kind of kill it to right there, but I like letting the cue ball roll. So I'm going to hit this above. No side spin. I'm just going to hit it above center and let it roll that in, rolling back. Stayed on this side of the table. Now I can just stun this ball. The cue ball is going to come off here and roll and leave me an angle right there. I could shoot it. I could cut it thin come and come off the rail here and there and come over to here. There's so many different options. And there's really not a correct way to do it. It's just whichever way you feel comfortable doing. Well, I'll tell you right now, if I cut this ball thin and catch right here, if I hit it just a little bit thicker than I think I'm going to hit it, the cue ball could hit the pocket. If I hit it as thin as I want to hit it, I'm going to come off the rail here and hit there. But like I said, if I make a mistake and hit that ball a little bit too thick, the cue ball is going to hit there and go in the pocket. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to float it and, and try to land perfect right there. So what I'm going to do is just stun this ball. I'm going to hit it. A little below center and it's going to slide all the way to here and then it's going to hit the seven and just drift and come off the rail about there and then roll it out into this area i could do the same shot with a tiny with some right hand spin so when it when it hits the rail it just rolls that way but i think i can just stun this and be really really perfect on that ball just like that I have multiple options here too. I like just following it. Straight follow, I'm gonna come off the rail, the cue ball's gonna bounce in right in there somewhere. Um, a lot of players would shoot this ball with some low outside, draw it to here and back over there and take the shorter shot on the nine. Um, I'm not gonna worry about it, I'm just gonna float that. I like either shot. I'm gonna set the shot back up and shoot both ways. I'm gonna shoot it this way first. I might even use a tiny bit of right hand spin, just a little bit to roll it over there soft. See, this is a longer, tougher shot if the camera's not in my way. It kind of is. I'm going to try to get it anyway. I'm kind of sideways here. 
very uncomfortable. Okay, so now the same shot I could have done, this was frozen in the middle, Diamond, wasn't it? Um, the same shot that I could have done, the nine ball was somewhere out in here. Um, to leave myself an easier shot on the nine, maybe, if the speed is correct, I could have shot this ball with some low outside spin, kind of aiming it a little thick, and get it like this. Now, even though I'm further away from the nine ball, nine ball is closer to the pocket. It comes up to that margin of error thing that I was showing when the video, when I first started this video, that this nine ball from here has a window of about probably two and a half degrees that it can go into that pocket, maybe three degrees. From here would be 10 degrees. The closer it is to the pocket, if it were sitting here, it's got a, about a 45 degree window. You can aim anywhere on the ball and make it. But from here, you got about a quarter of the ball that you can use for aiming. Right here, you got about a 16th. But when I was on this side of the nine, I was there, cutting it up there, I've got to be within a millimeter and a half of the proper place to aim or I'm going to miss the ball. But from, from here where the ball is closer to the pocket, it looks like a tougher shot, but it's not. Because the nine ball is closer to the pocket, I have more, I have a bigger window to pocket the ball. From here, even though the angle looks a little better, I have to be more accurate. But from here, I just have to make sure I'm, I hit this ball as accurately as I can hit it, and I've got more room for error. I'm just going to roll through this ball. No, nothing fancy. Just going to roll right through it. But that's two different options that you can use. Um, if you are really accurate aiming, then there's nothing wrong with shooting a long shot. You need to shoot long shots. They come up all the time. But I'm just from remember that margin that I showed earlier when there was a ball sitting here, the cue ball is there, and the object ball is here. You can only be off by a millimeter or so, and you're going to end up. A millimeter left or right, and you probably missed the ball. But from down there, you can be 10 millimeters off. It's just more room for error. But hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you have a happy Halloween.